I'm Chris and this is my GM three wire internally regulated alternator conversion update and more info video now the point of this video is kind of like if you have already went through everything you got everything working but you're not a hundred percent it just seems like something's not right now the number one thing that we need to understand that this is not an upgrade this is not a high output or high amp alternator upgrade this is a conversion you have to convert the system over before you can upgrade the alternator or do it at the same time upgrading would be you know you have a big radio fuel injection cooling fans you would need to run maybe 100 amp or 80 amp and when you upgrade that alternator to 80 amp you're going to have to upgrade your wires you might be running six gauge or um, or bigger thicker wires whatever there's charts for that look that up but in this case it's just a 79 monte carlo 305 53 55 amp and we're able to use the factory uh, 10 gauge wires without any problems the fastest and easiest way to convert it over is the watch my easy conversion video uh, god is my witness that's 100 percent correct it is no bs it has that plug you jump f four two and three that's all you do they sell plugs for 50 dollars that literally do that and people buy them all the time and just like in my video you take these two wires out of this plug out of the original plug and stick them in a new plug and that's all you need to do everything is the same and that's all you do and you should have no problem zero i've done that a bunch of times now in this video we're going to be talking about the problems that you can have after everything's working okay it seems to be working but we're not 100 percent consistent okay so that's what's going on with this car you're going to need test lights you're going to need multimeters there's no way in the world you're going to figure out your problem without tools like this okay you just have to have them so first of all we got our voltage on our battery let's see what happens okay, so i'm going to be talking about everything so that we are all on the same page externally regulated if they had gauges they had an amp meter this thing has to be above zero for it to be charging if it's below zero like that it's not charging you got a problem internally regulated alternators went to voltmeters you see we got the auxiliary with the voltmeter on the far right so some cars will have a red this is the brakes i don't have my emergency brake hooked up so they will have a red uh, gen light or battery light but on this dash it doesn't have the dummy light so we got the amp meter below zero voltmeter 12. you saw the voltage it was like 12.5 let's crank it up Okay, so the engine's cold. I'm trying to simulate like going to work in the morning. And you see we got the car started. We didn't push any gas or nothing. And, and the alternator's not charging. So we have a problem. So that's going to be our first problem that we start the car up and it's not charging. That's your number one. Your exciter wire. Okay, so let's start it up again and we're going to give it some gas. And we're going to watch the voltage come up because it's going to start charging. Okay, watch the amp meter. So you've seen how it kicked in. It's not supposed to kick in like that. That means that number one, the fields are not being excited. So we have to figure out what the problem is. Okay, so we need to take our test light. We're grounding our test light, we're putting it on number one. Okay, so first we're gonna check it with ignition on. I'm leaving that park brake on so you know ignition is on when that red light comes on. So ignition's on. Okay, so it's not coming on with ignition. Let's try it in accessories. Okay, nothing in accessories. So in other words, number one is not hooked up. So you can see number one is not hooked up to anything. There's no power coming to number one in accessories or ignition to excite the fields to get this thing to start charging. That's why we have to rev it up. 
So what we're gonna do to fix this is we're gonna take this out. Now, you need to be very careful because this is the voltage sensing wire connected straight to the battery. So if you're gonna be playing around with this, uh, you can ground it out real easy with the case. I'm just doing this for the video, so be careful. So what I have here is the dummy light ran straight off a of positive. Now the only reason this works like this is because it's not back feeding through the ignition. And that's why you can't run it off of ignition on the key switch because it's gonna back feed through your coil and keep your engine running. But you see well, how this is not gonna back feed to the coil, so this is gonna work like this. But we're just gonna test the exciter wire. We haven't changed anything, we haven't done anything. We're gonna go start it up and it's gonna instantly charge because we have now excited the fields on number one position. Let's check that out. We're gonna bump ignition and it should drop below zero. Okay. 12, let's start it up and watch that amp meter. Dummy light went off. Okay, so you see how when we started up with the exciter wire, that everything started charging, everything came to life. You know, whenever that thing's not charging, it's taking a draw off of that battery, sucking all the juice out of everything, and that's how come uh, when we did it the second time, it came to life better. So let's just check that out once again. But do you kind of see the point of the amp meter? A lot of people don't even know how to wire an amp meter. They don't even know what it does because, like me, I was born in 84. I never even seen one until I got into old cars. Okay, 12 volts. We're below zero. Start it up. <laughs> See how the dummy light works it excites number one so our alternator immediately starts charging doesn't matter what rpm it was on like six or you know 600 rpm the engine is still cold this is a cold start you can see the freaking temperature of the engine okay so do you see the point i'm trying to prove that we're starting this engine up cold you see where the temperature is and it just begins to charge no matter what the rp rpm is let's verify that right now it's charging at 500 rpms <laughs> So the whole point of this update video is to show you, now that I fully understand what's going on, that there is no kicking in. It's the simple fact that you don't have the fields energized so it starts charging at any RPM. You've seen it charge at five or six hundred RPM. So it's very important that you turn all your lights on, your radio, AC, whatever you can, and make sure that thing is charging. You've seen, we don't even have any lights or radio on or anything, and it's charging 13.09 volts. That's way too low. That's a remanufactured alternator that I bought whenever I finished building this engine. It doesn't have any miles on it. Um, it could start working all of a sudden, maybe when I start driving it, but it needs to be taken back and tested in exchange for a new one or a better one. I would say above 13 and a half to around 14 point something um, would, is what I would consider normal, but I don't work on cars every day. So. so that's why I'm showing you to make you up a dummy light with a 194 bulb in there so you can test and make sure if that is your problem or not. What you've seen, we're not getting power to this in accessories or ignition. So what needs to be done now is that we have to figure out how to wire something through the harness uh, to turn number one on with accessories from the key switch. So yes, that means going into your wiring harness if you want to do it the correct way. The wiring harness should have the brown wire going to there already. So we would have to pull the fuse box apart and wire 
um, a completely auxiliary like separate wire but we're not going to be able to do that now because you see the car we're going to do it whenever we paint this i'm taking it all back apart but just letting you know that that's what you have to do if you're not getting power to number one is you're going to have to figure out how to get power on with accessories turn it back on the key switch and it should take care of your problem so that's really the only problems you're gonna have are with number one. Let's just confirm that number two position is voltage sensing. It's connected back hot all the time. This does not ever shut off. This is ran straight back to the battery. You can just run it, jump it right there if you want to, uh, but it's hot all the time. So we're gonna go ahead and draw a real quick wiring diagram just so that we're all on the same page. Now you have to have every wire hooked up on this system for it to start up and charge like my car just did it in the video. Now, this is an re existing regulator plug. On my car, I cut it out of the harness. I have a video on here showing you how to do that, but in this video, we're just bypassing this. And when you bypass that, all you do is you're jumping F and four, two and three. That's all you do. They sell plugs like that for $40. And in my easy conversion, that's all we did. We're jumping that uh, that plug, we pull the regulator off, and we're jumping those wires. As simple as that. That has to be done. Now, number two is voltage sensing. This is the one that can be jumped right back to the lug, charges your battery. This can be ran or run straight back to your battery to charge it. Number one position goes back to this plug right here. Number one position is a blue wire that goes back to F and it's jumped to 4 4 goes back to your dash to your dummy light and runs off of accessories okay so number two in the plug is a white wire it just jumps back to number three number three goes back to your battery okay so you see whenever you jump that plug that's all you're doing. You're just connecting uh, two voltage sensing back to hot. That's how come it's okay to just run it back to the lug. All this needs is 12 volts constant. So if yours isn't charging immediately, you need to figure out how to get number one. However you gotta run it, run it to a wire that comes on with accessories. Not ignition. If you run it back to ignition, it's gonna back feed through that light and keep your car running. But like in my other videos, if you have to run it to ignition, you run it with the diode in series. From ignition with a diode pointing towards the alternator. This car that I'm building, I'm gonna drive it everywhere. It doesn't matter, this works 100%. This is just taken off of factory wiring diagrams that I've been studying over the years. If you have any questions just let me know but please don't ask me questions like where are the grounds connected it's a direct current system everything is grounded well if you enjoyed the video please like and subscribe and thanks for watching